Good morning. Good morning, and once more, a very big good morning, and welcome to another new month. It is the month of April, and we are excited and blessed to be a part of this new day, new week, new month. Mm, if anybody's as, as excited as I am, because I just know that God is God is taking us to a new level. He's taking us to another dimension this new month. And I hope that you feel strong enough to believe it because it can only work for you as long as you believe it. Let us start this morning with a short word of prayer as you take a step into your next blessing. Amen. Heavenly Father, once more we are grateful for who you are, for what you've done, and what you've made us. We may not see it. We may not believe it. But it doesn't change who you are. Thank you for being who you are. Which is the God of our lives. And as we come before you this day. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will help our unbelief. You will help us to see you. To experience you. To know you. Like you want us to know you. And not like the world wants us to. All praise and glory be unto your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. I have no other God but you. I have no other God but you. You have done what no man has done. You will do what no man can do. Lord, you have done what no man has done. Lord, you will do what no man can do. I have no other God but you, Jesus. I have no other God but you. For you have done what no man as dawn, you will do what no man can do. Lord, you have done what no man has done. You will do what no man can do. You have done what no man has done. Lord, you will do what no man can do. With the cabbage, oh, see you. Cabbage. Oh, see, oh, you are God from heaven and the earth. Gabi, oh, see, you. Gabi, oh, see, Gabi, oh, see, you. Gabi, oh, see. Gabio, oh, see, oh, Gabio, see, oh, you are the God of heaven and the earth. Gabio, oh, see, oh, Gabio, oh, see. 
que había sido, que había sido. You are the God of heaven and the earth, que había sido, que había sido, que había sido. That's why I have no other God but you. We have no other God but you. For you have done what no man has done. And you will do what no man can do. You have done what no man has done. Lord, you will do what no man can do. You are God from the heavens and the earth. You are God from beginning and the end. Jesus has done about the truth, 
what the Lord has done about the truth, what Jesus has done. Would you come and hear it? Come and hear. Would you come and see it? Come and see. Oh, come and see what Jesus has done. 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 Come and hear what Jesus has done. Come and hear what Jesus has done. Would you come receive what Jesus has done? Come receive what Jesus has done. Come and take what Jesus has done. Come and be what Jesus has done. He's done mighty things. He's done glorious things. What a faithful God. Awesome is his name. He has done mighty things. He has done glorious things. What a faithful God. Awesome is his name. He has done mighty things. He has done glorious things. What a faithful God. Awesome is his name. He's done mighty things. He's done glorious things. What a faithful God. Awesome is. His name is done mighty things. He's done mighty things. He's done glorious things. What a faithful God. Awesome is your name. I like the song you were giving before this one. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. Oh, come and see what the Lord has done. Oh, come and see what the Lord has done. Sisters, come and see what my God has done. Oh, come and see what my God has done. Why not come and see what Jesus has done? Oh, come and see what the Lord has done. I'm so excited. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Welcome again to Epwe. I know I saw you a few hours ago, but it has pleased the Lord that we are here again this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for such an amazing privilege. We do not take it for granted. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for taking our time out of your busy schedule to be with us this morning. We do not take that for granted. We are grateful. Of course, we are live on Facebook. We are live on Instagram. Please, if you're watching me from either of the platforms, if you're on Facebook, I just beg of you, you know what to do. Go ahead and hit the share button. Invite somebody to the Transforming Woman Fellowship because I know that they will be blessed. If they if they are part of this fellowship, they'll definitely be blessed. So please share it on your page, share it on your status, send it to people's messengers, personal texts and they shall be blessed of course if you're watching us again on instagram you just go ahead and do the same thing for those people who are on the zoom you know what to do the link is already on the whatsapp page please forward it to your status forward it to somebody and be a blessing to somebody as we go throughout the month of april and while you're doing that i just want to officially welcome you to the transforming woman fellowship ensure that it's called ttw the scripture we have for this morning is second Corinthians for this fellowship. Sorry, is second Corinthians chapter three, 
verse 18, which says, But we all we unveil faces be um we unveil faces beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And so, what is this fellowship all about? It is an interdominational gathering of women, regardless of their age, status, or for fellowship to behold the face of our master jesus christ and in the course of that we evaluate our lives daily for spiritual good it is a place where women are trained to thrive understand time and season and stand the gap in the place of prayer for themselves their family and the nation we use the word woman as per the title of the gathering instead of women because it is a personalized decision to be made by every woman depending on how hungry she is in need of the master's help we gather for now every monday to worship share the word of god and pray our way into our pre-designed destinies it is we okay pray our way into our pre-designed destinies our mission is to gather to fellowship with the holy spirit and evaluate our lives daily for spiritual good our vision is to raise a generation of women who are passionate for god they are conscious of their life in the sacred they are ready to fulfill purpose enjoy marriage and promote godly parenting our values are love humility compassion giving excellence self-control and sacrifice you're very much welcome it is a new month it's the month of april and the theme we have for this month okay my technical department says <laughs> i'm going the wrong way okay so what you see on your screen i'm sorry for those of you on instagram please if you want to reach out to us if this ministry has been a blessing to you you have a testimony you actually seen change life whatever thing you want to reach out to us with whatever the information may be is it a prayer request please you can reach out out to us through our email which is the transforming woman 2020 at gmail.com or you could text us from either of the social media platform and someone is going to respond to you uh, okay thank you <laughs> and someone is going to respond to you so this is a new month it's april and the theme we have for this month is the fear of the lord i mean i know it's kind of a rare theme i guess some people be like okay because myself i just know that the lord has laid that in my heart to tell you the truth i don't know um april has five mondays so it would take the grace of god i'm like god what am i going to preach on the fear of the lord for five mondays but he has done it before and i know he'll even do it more better this this time the fear of the lord but before we go into what really you know caught my attention and it was just in my spirit to talk about it i just want us to pray father we want to thank you for this moment we give you all the praise and all the glory we thank you for the opportunity for us to be again under your word to listen from you to eat from your table father i pray that as your word is about to come forth our heart to be ready to receive the psalmist says in psalms 119 verse 25 he said oh revive me by your word i pray that your word this morning will revive our spirit your word will not just entice us and make us excited but your word is going to bring forth change and transformation in our lives and that when we look at our lives subsequently we shall see the impact of your word in our lives i yield myself before you because i'm nothing than the one you have sent this morning to bring forth your counsel to your people i pray that every form of arrogance every form of pride whatever it may be that is contrary to the will of god over to this message lord i give you permission that you go into my heart and my spirit you take it out let it be about you this morning may your name be glorified as your word comes forth i pray that the holy spirit will go around and begin to you know touch hearts that have been hardened that the holy ghost is going to melt heart we come against the god of this world that blinds the heart of men we come against every form of distraction everything that will cause your people not to hear your word father we take authority over that thing and we decree that the word of the lord will find expression in the hearts of people this morning and you heaven will recognize that men had an encounter with you and at the end of the day when you are done with us blessing us touching our lives we pray that you take all the glory because it belongs to you in jesus much less need we have prayed amen and amen so as i said we'll be looking at the fear of the lord you know throughout the month of april that's our theme the fear of the lord but then that's the theme for the month but today we'll be i'll be sharing on what i titled so do not or don't this on what you know do not be deceived and um, do not live in deception do not live in deception that's what we'll be talking about today i just kind of feel you know looking just meditating on the scripture meditating on the whole um the fear of the lord i was just thinking i say god what do we really start with and i feel like 
based on what attracted me or what was really heavy in my spirit with regards to the topic, I feel like we should start from that point. It may be things we have heard before, but it is worth being reminded over and over and over. So we're looking at do not be this, do not live in deception. I don't know why it's just deceived that's coming to my mind. Do not live in deception. It's going to be our our topic this morning, and I pray that the Lord will help us. So Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30, we are looking at um the virtuous woman, you know, that's the Proverbs 31 woman. Proverbs chapter 30. 31 verse 30, that's where the theme actually came from. But because we will not just be talking about the, the, the virtuous woman, that is why I had to limit it to the fear of the Lord because it's actually a, a little bit broader than just the Proverbs 31 woman. But today we're going to be focusing on the Proverbs 31 woman and then probably subsequently we'll now go to the broader part of the fear of the Lord. So if I can have the anchor scripture on the screen and then we'll move from there. The Bible says charm is deceptive. If we can, can we start from NLT? If you can give me any, um, New King James Version, sorry, first. I think I gave it to you. Let's start from New King James Version. Hallelujah. So Proverbs chapter 30. Okay, the Bible says, Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman what, who fears the Lord shall be praised. A woman was fierce. I came across this scripture. I don't know. I was not actually reading the book of Proverbs. Thank you for that. Um, for the, the scripture. Charm is deceitful, you know. But the Bible says that beauty is passing away. Some other versions say beauty is flirting. It said, but the woman who fears the Lord. And so it just became so strong in my school. The woman who fears the Lord. The woman who fears the Lord. I didn't even know that it could be a theme. I'm like, can you know, can you preach? It can be a message, but just preaching it entirely the whole month, I was like, God, but it just kept being in my spirit. I knew that that was what the Lord wanted us to talk about this month. And so the Bible was talking about a woman, not even a man. Now, in this place, it was specifically a woman, but the fear of the Lord is something that cuts across every gender. It's not limited. But then, you know, the author of Proverbs was giving all this illustration about a perfect woman, if we put it that way in quotes. And that is why when we read the, the story of the virtuous woman, the Proverbs 31 woman, one of the things we see is people, people always, you know, come to conclusion that, ah, it is almost impossible to attain all of these attributes. Ah, what type of woman is this? Is it a superwoman? Is it a woman who is like that and like that? You know, but one thing that is amazing about that scripture, and it's amazing about the, the Proverbs 31 woman, is that at the end of it, because we're looking at the last verses of the Proverbs 31 woman, and you see how the author tries to project that no, because if, if you stand outside of the sight of God, you will see things like they're almost impossible. You see things like they are not attainable. And so at the end of the day, you live life outside the will and the purposes of God because you are not seeing it from his lenses. And it is easier for us to conclude. Now, there's none of us that is perfect. We are all work in progress. But the fact that it is mentioned and it is explained, it means that it is attainable by the help of someone. There are things that we cannot just do them naturally. But the help of God can help us, you know, the Spirit of God can help us to attain some of these things, especially if it is what the Lord expects from us. So the fear of God is something that is very, very vital and important that I think that has been missing in the body of Christ, not entirely, but we see as days go by that this is one of the attributes that is actually not, you know, very um, um, used or very utilized in our lives as Christians. So it will be important for us to go through this month, looking at these things again, reminding ourselves, just to put ourselves on check. Remember what we stand for. You know, we evaluate our lives. The Bible says daily for spiritual growth. So we stand for raising women that will, you know, put a check on themselves, not just waiting for other people to evaluate them. But as you go through your life's journey, as you go through day by day, you'll be able to assess yourself that how am I doing with my work with God? Is my life getting better 
Am I getting better in the things of God? Am I improving? Those are the things that make us who we are as the transforming women or as a transforming woman. And so we see the story of a perfect woman, all made, being industrious, being this, being that, being that. But now the author says that, first of all, let me talk about this woman a little bit. Let it not just be from the all advantageous point that you are thinking that this is a superficial woman, but there is something that actually sponsors what this person can do and the bible now began to narrow it down no it's not all about her abilities it's not all about her beauty it's not all about the charm but it's all about the fear of the lord it has something to do with the things that she's able to do now you look at the the, the, the scenario of a woman who has a balanced home we prayed early this morning about balance right you know you see a scenario of a woman whose husband is at the gate who provides for the family the children are doing okay and you know it is these things are, can be attainable, but the fear of the Lord is one attribute we can see by revelation and by what the scripture has given to us that actually sponsors and propelled some of the things she could do. Now, even within those stories, you know that naturally you cannot even carry all of those activities. You are going to worn out as a woman trying to do all of those things. But then the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the fear of the Lord was able to do. So looking at that scripture, just put the NLT version on the screen. Let's look at it again. Let's look at it again. The Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30. If you look at the scripture now, the Bible says, well, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord but a woman so it's giving us we see the word charm we see the word beauty and so i was meditating just keep the the the, the scripture on the screen what was meditating though i knew that we want to talk about the fear of god but i felt in my spirit that there was something about the first part of this scripture that should not be ignored there's something about it that we just need to remind ourselves even though we know it may be an important foundation for us as we look at the theme the fear of the lord because it would have just said the woman who fears the Lord. Of course, as we'll be going through the other weeks, you'll be seeing scriptures and things and how God expects us to fear him. But then the author started by, because he was dealing with women specifically, he wanted to talk about beauty. He wanted to talk about charm. And you know, these keywords are very vital. So I want us to just dwell a little bit on the first part of it. So by the time we are going to bet the woman who fears the Lord, we have reminded ourselves of some of those things that we have been living in which has deceived us the bible says charm is deceitful so it is something we pay attention to have we actually been paying attention more to charm than what the word of god wants us to do so that's what we'll be looking at we'll be looking at the fact decept and deception this morning because the bible says what it is deceitful so what is the meaning you can take it off what's the meaning of charm so we just get the understanding say the bible says charm is deceptive charm is deceitful based on the translation but what is the meaning of deception it means so sorry charm because that's the first thing we see charm is deceptive so what is the meaning of charm charm is the power of pleasing or attracting you know sometimes some people especially maybe you know as a as a lady when you get to that age where men are trying to toast you around trying to follow you around you always hear you are charming and so sometimes we usually blush over those words thinking that it's actually the sweetest of um attribute but not charm is not really really like um what word can i use it's it's not a bad thing but not they could be alternate alternative to that word that makes it more um more better it's kind of um it's more like um a spirit something i don't know how to explain that but <laughs> yes of course okay sister claire said charm is a juju power on man you know so it's not actually a word that you know especially as a young girl you are not yet married and people say you look charming i don't think it's it's really as a child of god it's not really a positive positive word you know what that can be used negatively we try to you know avoid it so you see that the vibe the, um, the dictionary says that the meaning of charm of course there are two meanings the one she's talking about that you use it, it has um, juju power and all the rest. But one of the, the meanings of charm, it's the power of pleasing and attracting. It also says it's the quality that makes you feel or like, that makes you like or feel attracted to something 
or somebody. So it's actually some compelling force. It's not a natural thing like that. And it's not a spiritual thing. You see the difference? It's not actually a spiritual thing. That's why if you go through the scripture, you don't see that something the law was using often. Now we see it in these proverbs, but you see it from another view, thinking that it's not the most positive word. So it says it is that, you know, that thing that makes you, it compels somebody, it, it compels attraction. That's the meaning of charm. So the author says charm is deceptive. I think for a moment, it means that it's something that this is meant for those of us who are kingdom women, children of God. Charm is deceptive because the people of the world don't see charm for them is a good thing. They want to look charming. They want to look all this, you know, but the Bible says charm is deceptive. And then beauty, some scripture says, is passing away. Beauty is flaring. We'll come back to deception because that's what we want to, you know, now we're teaching down to. But let's look at beauty. I discovered that beauty and charm, you know, beauty kind of talks about our outward look, the way we look. Beauty kind of, the, um, not the Bible, I keep saying the Bible. The dictionary says that beauty is an attractive quality, quality that gives pleasure to those who experience it or think about it. It's an attractive quality. So when you look at some of the synonyms of charm, some of the synonyms, things that are related. So if you were talking about charm, you can talk about glamour. You can talk about desirability. You can talk about magnet magnetism. It talks about a pull, a draw, an attraction, attractiveness, beauty. Those are some of the synonyms of charm. So there's kind of a, you know, a, 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 a relation there. Now you see, I, I didn't study English in the high school. Of course, we all studied English like my, my, my measure or neither did I do it in the university. But then you see them using and, you know, it means it's kind of a comparison between two things. You are trying to, two things that are similar. You now say this and this thing. It means it can be combined together. It can be used together. The Bible says charm is deceptive. But it's important we know what deception is to be able to understand the first part of that scripture. Charm is deceptive. So what does it mean? What does deception mean? What does deception mean? It means giving an appearance or impression different from the true one. Giving an appearance or impression that is different from the true one so in other words it means faking when something is being fake it means misleading it means lying it means cheating it means corny the bible says what well, the enemy the devil is corny satan is corny it means corny it means untruthful it means cook if you look at all this attribute this is this are this is the personality of satan so now i want us to understand as we lay this foundation that now beauty it's the way god has created us he has made us wonderfully made beautifully made it's not like it's entirely a bad thing and that is why i say it's not really bad these are these are things that beauty is good but the scripture tries to tie it to deception because deception it's not actually it talks about a thing that projects something else outside but when you look at the inside of that thing it is not exactly what is showing and i think it's a very common word because at one point or another each and every one of us have either met with someone who is decept deceitful meet with someone who is lying we have had curly friends maybe also you know we should not just point fingers at other people maybe our own self at one point too, we we just had to you know fake certain lives that we have not actually gotten to that point so it's not actually a strange thing but then when we try to connect it to beauty it, it kind of you know begin to make us as christians we must sit and think okay what is why did god allow this particular verse in the bible is there something we need to pay attention to is there something we need to believe and we you know you we incorporate it inside of us to see that okay this thing might be used but then as a child of god we have to see it from another dimension or another angle and the bible says this thing that every each and every one of us we are seeking 
and trying to desire after has all the attributes connected to what Satan is specializing. And I think that is why the author was bringing it before talking about the fear of the Lord. Because if these are the areas that is, the enemy is specialized in, it means that is what he's going to use. Not necessarily because these things are bad, because beauty is a bad thing, because charm is 100% bad. It's just because the attributes of these things, it's what the enemy can easily use to lure the child of God out of his plan and the purpose that God has for his life. So things like that, that has all these things attributed to them, there are things we must pay special attention to if we are actually thinking of growing with our work with God. So charm is deceptive. And deception, it's not portraying the right thing. You know that ah, this thing is not the right thing. Though. You know that this life I'm living is fake life. Oh, but you don't mind living it so long as it gives you pleasure. So long as it makes you happy. So long as you feel satisfied, so long as you, you have the accolades, so long as people that do not know about it, they applaud you, they praise you, you are, you are contented with it, you're satisfied with it. And you know, permit me say that, um, okay, let me talk about deception before I go to the fear of the Lord, because I just wanted to give an introduction of that, you see. So it makes us, now in, our, in this dispensation we live, our dispensation now places emphasis on outward appearance, which is good. You see me, even before a fellowship started, God will help me sometimes, you know, I'll be on the mirror trying to look, ah, am I okay? And um, how, you know, so somehow even this, the people who are in church or who are spiritual, they still try to look at, you know, their outward appearance. So you see even sometimes, even when uh, and they are singing, I'm still trying to check before I go on live, uh, if I'm okay, if I'm doing this, if I'm doing that, you know. So sometimes the they, they well, this dispensation, we place so much emphasis on our outward appearance. Just early this morning, as I was meditating and just thinking about, you know, the fear of the Lord and how we can become or God can help this fellowship and this ministry to raise women that will fear him. I just began to think, I wasn't in that generation, but at least I could see some pictures. I could see even our mothers, if you can reflect, if you have ever seen, if your mother is maybe above 50, 55 years above, if you have seen pictures in those days, it's not like makeup is a new thing, right? Or it's not like um, all these things we are seeing is new. But if you look, even though some of their pictures used to be black and white, but if you look at the way they used to present before, I'm, I'm not talking now even just about their dressing, I'm talking about their facial um, expression, their their facial makeup, sorry. It's, it's very totally different. It used to be very mild and very simple, but now, you know, it has, we have so many, many, many things we use. And I love makeup. I love, I do love makeup. And so most times I'll be like, even when I'm doing makeup, I'm like, who, who really invented? How did they know that if you put this black thing, it's so black, but then if you, if you, if you, if you blend it together, it still gives some beauty. I'm like, how do people come out with all these ideas and all these um, things we use on our faces and you combine all of them, their colors are different, but then when you combine them, it's still making some, some sense. So I was just looking at those, and I'm like, how do people, how do people do this? But then, you know, that's what God has done. But looking at the old, looking at how people were doing things, you discover that as the dispensation, as we keep moving forward, you discover that we pay more attention to our outward appearance. So as a result of that, we put in great efforts to enhance this appearance. There are certain things that most of us will not do. I know of a colleague, I work with somebody that does not leave the house without lashes. So I was actually so concerned and I said to her, why, why must you wear lashes? Like, in fact, she's addicted to lashes now she does not she must not necessarily do makeup like that she will do makeup but not all the time she will do like heavy makeup but you see lashes she cannot do without lashes she wear lashes 24 7. she like so i i became interested in and i was asking i said why she told me that her natural lashes is um that she doesn't have it so because of course she had lashes on so and i said you have a picture of you without lashes say yeah when i'm at home sometimes that uh, i'm just talking because i've not seen her her natural lashes she looks like she gave one description about herself i can't remember the exact description how she looks very funny um when she doesn't have lashes on and that's what she believes so she cannot do in fact she has never forgotten but even if she forgets she'll go back home because she must wear lashes 
lashes for her it's like putting on your own this you know in the morning so anyway she showed me a picture so i tried to zoom the picture i was looking at it. i said but i don't really you know you have a few lashes um natural lashes she's like ah maybe i'm not seeing well that all her lashes is is out you know she doesn't have any lashes so she cannot do without artificial lashes she has to have lashes all the time but it got me one that was like ah good for you at least you don't forget you know but that's the way we are living it and you know i try to look up and i see that research shows especially in the united states that about 49 billion dollars is spent on advertisement for cosmetics i'm not talking about general advertisement now i'm talking about cosmetics these things that enhance us general cosmetic uh be, be it for the skin for the face all these things that try to make us look more beautiful more enhancing 49 is it million or billion now maybe i made a mistake either million or billion but either of them that's a huge amount of money is being spent on the advertisement of cosmetics because they have understood that the generation we are now is more attracted to the things that enhance their body enhance their beauty and so as a result of it as we get older we keep spending money more to keep our body intact of course we all know that the way you are looking in your 20s is not the same the way you're looking in your 30s the way you're looking in your 30s is not the same you look in your 40s and that is why if you keep watching the tv here in the united states you see this advertisement of um those people you see they i, I always see them where you have a sack under your eyes so they are looking for everything and look at the people who buy it my god they don't want to get old they want to be 70 and they don't want their eyes to suck why so you see huge amount of money get into it they say if you apply the, the cream under your eyes within five minutes or so you see instant results of how those sacks under your eyes are getting formed again so you look at all these things you see how people invest money in cosmetics just to make sure that their body and their beauty is on tack on track they don't want to get old they don't want to look funny and so what happens the older you become the more money you spend because you have to try to keep up with it you have to try to keep up with it but one thing as we remind ourselves because i'm not against it because i do it as well i do makeup right so one thing we want i want us to learn as children of god is that if the scripture is bringing this to our attention we must understand that this makeup i have on i don't sleep with it the fact that I've, i did of course last over the night after prayers i was the one who led i had light made up makeup now, I had to go wash it off before continuing prayers. And then God up this morning again, I have to do another one, fresh makeup for a fresh day. So you discover that anything that has to do with our outer appearance, anything that has to do with, with our enhancing our outside has to be done often to maintain the glamour of that. So beauty, glamour has to be maintained beauty glamour does not last it needs to be reapplied so if i have to go for another occasion tomorrow if i have something to do and i feel like oh i want to look you know this this particular way i don't just want to look very normal so i have to reapply another makeup so they are good but then you have to put in effort always to be to reapply that thing in order to meet up with that standard that you have in your mind or the standard that you think other people have for you and so because you want to meet up with that standard you have to keep on doing it and as i said the older you become the more you will spend money to keep it up because at one level now maybe now i feel like i still have everything but at one level i want to make sure wrinkles don't come this one does not come in you know and that is why when we're younger if a child is a teenager they don't bother but they say age you get to maybe after kids you you gain some weight you see we want to put this thing on our stomach you want to do this you want to do that you want... so you see all these things what do we do we put effort to make sure that we are we are on track and the author says these things are deceitful because not because they are wrong it's just because these things wear out they wear out sorry over time is it our clothes 
Is it our dressing? Of course, we already know that. Fashion keeps changing. Fashion keeps changing. What used to be in, on, on trend 10 years ago, it's no longer a trend now. And so because you need to meet up with societal, you know, belief or what they have put out there, you have to keep updating things you wore months ago. You are not even having the appetite to wear them any longer. Dresses we wore three years ago, we don't want to wear them. We felt like, oh, maybe we have overworn these dresses and people have seen us it's time for us to go new and we can attest of how much we spend monthly yearly sometimes we have to keep record of them just to make sure that we keep this outer appearance on track so we spend more money so that we can look young and we can look attractive but you know why i what i like about the scripture the bible tells us about how um charm is deceitful and beauty is passing away i said to us that the and is because both of them has to do with our physical both of them has to do with something in our outside but now you now went ahead to you now went ahead to say that but in other words it was giving us what another alternative it says that ah you when you go to a store to buy there somebody says ah madam you say what do you want i i want i want this pen he said, but don't worry, I have, I have another one, just in case. So when he's telling you, but, but, this one, but this, is giving you another option. That it is either this or this. This, but this. This, but that. So he has given us and, which is talking about the combination. They can be used together. Charm and beauty can be decept deceptive. The Bible says, but a woman who fears the Lord. A woman who fears the Lord, the Bible says, shall be praised. So that bird is talking about a greater and a superior alternative. A greater and superior alternative. It means the other things may be used more often. But that as a child of God, there is another thing that we must believe and put in our mind that is better off than these things we have mentioned. That is better off than the makeup we have on. That is better off than the beauty we have. That is better off than the shape God has given you. That is better off than all the things we see outside that men keep reminding us that we have. The Bible says, but there is a superior alternative to those things. And that is what we're going to be looking at so we don't lose track we don't allow the enemy takes advantage of that which he has, you know, access to because he uses those those lying, curly ways to get to our generation, get to our youth. And you see people now, you know, you have to struggle to do a surgery, to add your boobs, to add your bobs, to add this. Why? It all goes back. You see why the Bible says these things are deceitful? Because we spend millions trying to make sure that these things keep us in shape you know i didn't i know i know it's it's, it's exercise is good i was actually talking to somebody that was like la, is it last week or the week before i didn't know how expensive she was even telling me the name of the medication so i was like what medication is that she says it's a shot that that's what she wants to do i don't know if we're talking about gym or something you know and then i think she brought up the issue of you know and somebody else with three of us somebody else was talking about um, um weight loss like doing exercise going to the gym she's like ah, she doesn't have time to go to the gym but she will take something. So she called the name of the thing, and even up to now, I can't, I can't remember. So I was like, what is that? She said, it's a shot that it really works so good. And I said, wow. I said, what does the shot do? She said, you just take the shot. When you take the shot, I think she said, it depends on how your body responds to it. Um, because I was asking her, for what duration? Do you take it all your life in order to keep fit? She's like, you just take the shot and it, it you know it cuts it burns every fat inside of you so she was complaining that the only thing that has stopped her now it's the amount i said is it expensive how much is this? is it 200 dollars she laughed at me she's like 200 dollars that is six did she say seven thousand dollars or six thousand dollars for the shot and i was asking her is it a shot for six thousand dollars i said wow yeah so she said the first time her insurance will not accept to pay for that i said yeah normally insurance will not pay for something that you can do without insurance just pays mostly for things that you need them so she's like insurance could not pay for it so the amount is so expensive she was waiting for something something to be able to keep it so that shot it costs seven six thousand dollars for that shot 
Why? Because she wants to look in a particular way. She doesn't believe that, okay, you know, life happens because I have kids and my eyes a little bit of weight. No, she wants to go back the way she was without kids. She tell me, before I had my kids, I needed to see her. So she needs to meet up with that amount, work, 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 and pay for a shot for $6,000 that will help burn the fat. Is it bad? No, I'm not here to say it's bad. But what I'm trying to say is the level that we all, the height we can go in order to maintain that thing that is fading away. In order to maintain that thing that does not last. That thing that we need to put in more effort to keep. And guess what? If that thing, that body is no longer there, you can imagine how fast that thing deteriorates. How fast a body you have worked for years and years and years to maintain. And you can imagine how fast it can be dissolved. It is important that children of God, we should pay attention to that which will last over time. That which we don't need to reapply. We just need to find out the secret behind it, what we need, and we enjoy it year on earth, and it will be enjoyed even, you know, in eternity. So, as I said, now we see the other part of the scripture. The Bible says, but the woman who fears the Lord. But a woman who fears the Lord. Now, I just have the intention of giving you like an introduction. Then we'll be talking about detailing, you know, the, the, the body of the fear of the Lord. But I want us to understand something as we talk about do not live in deception. Do not begin to measure on those things that are actually minor. We have heard this over and over. But what we have to think is in my life, what is my measure? It, are these all the things I am pursuing? Are these the only things I'm focusing on? Is the fear of God inside of me? Do I fear God? Do I actually fear God? Or I fear a man who says, if you are not up to this standard, I'll divorce you. If you are not like this, just know. And so we are, you are under that pressure because you want to save the marriage. You want to keep that man. And so you are willing to go to any height just to make sure that you can keep that man. But you are not willing to go to any height just to make sure that your relationship with God is intact. Have we misplaced our priorities? Charm is deceitful. We can be living in deception. At the end of your life, you discover you have been deceiving yourself all this while. I heard of, I, I was, that was like a month ago or more than a month ago of a lady who was giving her testimony, her story. She said something that really shocked me. She had cancer of the nose. Is it the nose or the mouth? The nose. She had cancer of the nose and she was just giving her testimony. So she was showing her pictures of, of um, what happened to her, like, it, 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 those are images you don't want to see, but, you know, one thing that really touched me was, I think she used to work, is it immigration or something? She's in Nigeria now. I can't remember her position, but I think it was a woman who was um well-to-do. She was well-to-do, and it started like a joke before she knew it. If you see the pictures of when, you know, that cancer consumed her, she while she was in the bed from one surgery to another, from one surgery, now, she said something at the end of her testimony. It's like a documentary. It's not like a testimony. She made a documentary because she actually said she was going to use it, you know, to tell people, to talk, to use this, her life that God has given her back, just to tell people about her testimony. But she made a statement. She said, she said now, when she looks at anybody that says, do you know who I am? Do you know what I'm capable of doing? Do you know what I have? Do you know? She said, when she said that, there's nothing that, that, makes her to be humble that the experience she has gone through she said for her now life means nothing it's her testimony that that actually struck me it meant a lot to me she said when she sees somebody now because she doesn't have at that time she don't have energy to talk all she could just think in her mind is if only i can live she has two children if only father if only i can live for these children i think she's a divorcee if i'm not making a mistake she's divorced the husband left her if i'm not making a mistake I'm not making a mistake. So if only I can live for these two children. And then when she sees someone, she even to query, you see these fights, I will do this. And I will, I will deal with this person. I will do this to this person. If you have not gotten to that point where you have a revelation of the fear of God inside of you, now looking life from a different perspective, you begin to focus on these things. You see ladies focusing on social media. 
one query to another you bring this person you scatter the person you you know these are the things that our generation is focusing on anything that is enhancing the outer you know feeding our flesh is that the things we focus on and she said that and nothing really touched me i may be explaining to you it may not make sense to you maybe if you look at where she has been through she said there is nothing she said anybody that said that thing to her she'll just look at them and she'll just smile and say ah if only these people know this life we live the depth of life she said now when she looks at life she said nothing matters to her she has seen life from a different perspective she couldn't eat food for i think months or years she could not eat food because that's all they had to put her on tube she was living on tube so now when she sees life every second she doesn't have she doesn't have time for any problem to keep malice to hate people no there's no time for it because she has another perspective to life you see the clothes she couldn't wear a dress they had to just tie her loin for months and months you can imagine seeking after those things fighting after those things killing after those things and someone has them they don't have the opportunity to even wear them they are just fighting for just just give me let me not die so i can train the children let me not die so i can maintain my children they don't have a father I'm the only person they have, and God kept her. What am I saying? The Bible says these things are good. It says, but the woman who fears the Lord. What is some of the deception I think we have? Now, this topic of the fear of God, these are one of the things you rarely, people do preach it. But if you look at the body of Christ now, if you look at, at our churches now, you rarely see you know us focusing on the fear of god anything that has to do with the things that please us you know that some messages you preach eh, as a woman of god or as a man of god when you preach those messages they entice people you see people stand up it has some sort of enticement it's not a bad thing it enticed them they feel they, they, there's this there's this feeling of happiness inside of them they feel pleased but then after one week it is fades away after one week, after three days, some after hours, it doesn't produce anything. It doesn't call for repentance. It doesn't cost them. You know, it just it just grants grant pleasure to their flesh. They feel enticed. Especially when it has to do with prosperity. Especially when it has to do with money. Especially has to tell you'll be rich, you'll be that. And so we find it more and more and more in this in this dispensation in the body of christ so our focus is all about you'll be good you'll be prosperous you married a rich man you have these children and so this and things are not bad but we have tilted away from those things that could make us become more intimate and close with god so you see a lot of people who are lovers of jesus that's one of the deceptions we are in we are lovers of jesus it's not like you don't love jesus or you love jesus lovers of jesus i mean lover i'm not just talking about goers people who go to church church goers i'm talking about lovers of jesus you can love jesus but yet don't fear him you can be a lover you love jesus you know he died for you you know he was waiting for you you talk about victory you love him but you do not fear him so one deception another deception you can leave is that the fact you think that because you love jesus you are fearing him no the fact that you love jesus does not mean that you fear Jesus. The fact that you love the Lord does not mean you fear him because you can love from an enticing point. You can love from just feeling alone, not from revelation. You can love from feeling the way they present him or the way they sing in your church or the way they do this particular thing. It just makes you like, ah, Jesus is sweet. Oh. But you do not have a revelation of him and so you don't have a fear of him so the fact that you go to church the fact that you say you love jesus and people out there tell you that they love you does not mean they fear god there's a big difference between the love of jesus and the fear of god and that is why there are so many men of god and so many women of god we see them as lovers but most of them don't fear god we are on the pulpit we are standing before god's people Oh, wow, 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 my that, that leader of TCW, that woman of God, eh, I, I, I like the way she loves God, but she does not fear God. So many, that is why, do you see the things that is happening in the body of Christ? You'll be asking, where has the fear of God gone to? Child of God, as we'll be looking at the fear of God, we'll be learning some things that will make us realize that the fear of God is not something that is not, is hidden. 
the fear of God manifests. You will see it. It's a spirit that manifests within us. It can't be hidden. You see it from your actions. You see it from your fruits. But we have us standing on the pulpit and then preaching the word of God to people and we don't fear God. It breaks my heart. We do not fear God, yet we preach the word of God. We don't fear God, yet we confess Christ. We don't fear him, yet we talk about him. Yet we sing about him. Yet we post about him. But the fear of God has eluded our hearts, eluded our homes. And I was meditating on it, looking at it, and I began to discover that everything, look at it, you see, from your marriage, from your parenting, from your work with God, from your closeness with God, in fact, if the world was to become, if you want to raise women that will make this world become better, instill in them the fear of God. Don't try to entice them. Teach them the fear of God. And because this, 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 this thing is missing, so we see a lot of things. Pastor sleeping with members. Member sleeping with pastor. Pastor doing this. Um, um, leader doing some some kind of atrocities and and mind you i'm not here to talk about other people this particular topic the first thing i did while i was meditating on this particular topic i started looking at old marian and new maria because i've been in both sides i looked at my life when i used to be in church the things i used to do the things I used to associate with, I, I began to, I, and I was asking God, please just teach me a little bit about the fear of God. I started looking at my life to do some comparisons. Same church, same person going to church, but two different personalities now. Now, my height did not change, my color did not change, my facial expression did not change, my, my, my physical makeup did not change. But something shifted. I could tell you because you can't fear God and you do not know you don't fear me. You will know. The only thing like what we are looking at, that's why I say, do not live in deception. Don't try to deceive other people because you can't deceive God. And don't try to deceive yourself living in deception that because I have, I'm feel or I'm, I'm, I'm doing activities make me a person who fears the Lord. And so we have a lot of people deceiving ourselves and we are deceiving other people, we think that we fear the Lord. The Bible says, but there is a higher and superior alternative to going to church. There is a higher and superior alternative other than wearing a decent dress. There is a higher and superior and, um, alternative other than having the giftings to sing, the gifting to serve. When you pray, people fall under the anointing. The Bible says, but a woman who fears the Lord. It's something we need to pause and pay attention. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Do I have the fear of the Lord inside of me? Am I actually fearing God or am I just fearing a man? And there's something about the fear of God. You discover that this thing, fear, we, it's something that we all know about it. But then for some reason, sometimes if we look at our life, have you ever been, I mean, there's some people who grew up fearing their fathers. They will fear, they can't, they cannot. Now all people, did not, uh, every person did not grow up in the same home. But there are people who, in places where they grow up, they can't approach their father to tell their father something. No, it's not possible because they are afraid of their father. There are other people, there are some people who are afraid even of their spouse. You, have you not? There are, there are men that are afraid of their wives, so. There are men that are afraid of their wives. They can't approach their wives. They're afraid of them. Likewise, there are women who are afraid of their husbands. They are married, they are married to men. They are afraid of them. They cannot approach their husbands. Their husbands are tyrants. Their children are afraid of their parents. There are people who are afraid of other people. So there are people, the Bible says concerning, is it Elisha? Elijah. He fear came upon him. He was afraid of Jezebel. Elijah, the man of God. So you have that fear. When people are afraid, that, that comes from anxiety. That fear, that comes from anxiety. You have anxiety, you have panic for somebody. But when we talk about the fear of the Lord, we're not talking about that fear that you are, you are running away from that person. You are trying that that person should not see. That's not the kind of fear we are talking about. The Bible says, but a woman who fears the Lord. You know, this world will become better when we have women who fear the Lord. Our generation will become better because when you have the fear of the Lord, you don't need a pastor to, to, to follow you up. And I've seen places where people are serving God so long as the pastor is seeing what they are doing. It's sad. So long as the pastor is seeing what you are doing, you will do right. So long as that is right, God, 
you know what you know what i've come to understand and i've asked god to help me because why i i want god to give me the boldness to say some of the things i say so that i'll put my life on shake have you discovered that there are certain things that most men of god will not talk about do not talk about it it's it's sad it's sad it's scriptural there are certain things that most women of god those people those of us that god has given us the opportunity to impact people through the world we will not talk about it simply because we don't want to be held accountable for the things we say so we we'll, we we'll shift corners when it comes to that point we we'll deviate from it we can talk about other things talk about tithes talk about giving we can talk any anything that is related to us that will help us that will entice us we will focus on it but those things that actually will make men to be converted and draw closer to god to repent even while they are in the body of christ will hide from it why because you the woman of god and the man of god you don't want to be whole and counted because you know you are aware that you do not fear god you know that the things you do in the secret you do not fear god so you not talk about it it's sad it's heartbroken to know that we are running away from these things and so you see raising women raising god and even when i was made i was just asking god god please help us help us because it's not all about us it's all about us if you of us start i used to say transformation starts from you if you start say ah this fear of the lord can i start living my life to fear god putting things in check see how your family will become better see how the church where you worship or where you go you in fact you tell let people know that this is the decision you have made so that you too can be living with that check that thing in mind and that is why i'm asking god to help me so i can talk about certain things not because i am perfect so that it will keep me in check it will keep you in check it helps you to stay on 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 a track you can't talk about false prophet they they, they you now say ah and 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 when you, when you talk about any man of god if you talk about any prophet it is written in the bible that false prophets why can't you teach your people the truth from the from from the right thing from the wrong thing because why you say and eh, eh, you should not talk about any man of god are you for are we for real in this generation and when the scripture say many will call me lord lord they will come in my name but because they don't have the fear of god in them they are not of me they love jesus because why what they present to you is the love of god you see them as lovers of god they they worship they say things so everything they present to you it's a sign to love but the fear of god remember we're talking about deception so what you project to the people is the love of jesus what you project to the members what you project to your fellow sisters is that oh my god i love jesus but deception says that you have an appearance ahead of you but what is behind the appearance has nothing to do with the fear of god so we have had robbers now in the church we have had manipulators now because there is no fear there is just love and love is not enough to transcend you to eternity it is the fear of god that will put you intact the bible says in matthew if you can look at, at the scriptures i gave you i didn't put them in order so please just check that matthew chapter 23 you see what jesus was saying to the pharisees and, and, and the sadducees if you can put matthew chapter 23 let's read it from verse 25 to 28 look at what jesus was saying he says woe to you it is still it is still applicable even now woe to you you scribes and pharisees it is important that we begin to personalize these things and put it to ourselves he says hypocrites hypocrites he called them hypocrites he says for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish you see where we fall in inside the body of christ this is where we follow all of us me inclusive he says we clean the outsides like what i just did now this on small touch up of makeup so i look all spiritual he says you clean the outside of the cup and the dish but inside they are full of all extortion but this is the things they don't want you to say hey you can't say that who are you to say who are you to talk about extortion if we don't talk about it then it means we are part of it if we cannot talk about it we are part of it because it is in the scripture this was jesus talking he didn't he didn't he said it to them he said what to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish but inside you are full of extortion when you extort people and self-indulgence he says blind pharisee when you cannot see 
when there's no discernment. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish. Fear of the Lord is in the inside. First clean the inside of the cup and dish that the outside of them may be clean also. Don't focus on the outer. Don't focus on what people will see. Don't do Christianity because you want people to think you are religious. That is not what will take you to heaven. That is not what will count after you are dead. He says what? He says that the outside of them may be clean also. Verse 27. Woe to you. He was repeating it again. I know you have heard these things before. The Lord is bringing it so that we can put ourselves on check. He says woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. He called them again hypocrites. Jesus was not confused here. It just shows the magnitude of the things we have to pay attention. He repeated it again. Same, same chapter. Hypocrites, for you are like what? Whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear what? Beautiful outwardly. You are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautifully outwardly. Say, but insides are full of dead men's bones, you can imagine, and all uncleanliness all uncleanliness even so you also outwardly appear righteous this is what they say you should not talk i, I don't understand it there's something i don't understand even so you also outwardly appear righteous to men but inside you are full of what hypocrisy and lawlessness it can be of emphasize insights you feel righteous. You look righteous outside. The Bible says inside of you. Too much hypocrisy. Politics. Too much politics. Now we have politicians in the body of Christ. You are filled with hypocrisy. This one, eh, eh, when you say things like this, this is the one to attack you. Then you begin to wonder what is happening in the body of Christ. Because these are the things we are supposed to talk about. So that we can, we can become better. But these are the things they say we shouldn't talk about. Then I don't understand now. I saw a few months ago, um, an apostle woman, Osai. Now, there was, I think I stumbled on a video that somebody was actually attacking him. I know there may be extremes. But then I reflected on that thing. And I began, to, I thought about it. I was like, you know, this is actually the thing that is happening in the body of Christ. And maybe for some of us, for example, who have missed it and then trying to fall back in trap, even those of us, they may want to use your past against you. And what happens is that they want to silence you from speaking the truth. So you can preach the word of God. So long as you don't preach things that would want to change men or contrary to the things that other people are preaching it. If you try to go to the righteousness side, if you want to go to... The holiness side, they don't want you to talk about it. Just say normal things. Just say normal things. They'll be okay. And so this particular man of God was attacking Apostle Arome and Osai because he made a video. He was preaching in his congregation and he said something. He said, if I've slept with any girl, if I've slept, if there's any woman in this world, I have slept with other than my wife. He said, you should come up and talk. So now this man of God took that part of the video and started talking that Apostle Arome is trying to do self-righteousness what do you mean by that no man is perfect now for a moment i decided to reflect on it i was like okay you know this is a generation we live in now now although he responded normally he said he will not respond but he needed to respond so that people know the truth and it kind of made sense it's easier for you to see that i, I wish that I, 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 I was like that though i didn't i didn't sleep with anybody i wish that was my, my story but then that's not my focus now, right? Now, he said, um, his, the, the man of God, the one who was attacking Apostle Rome, his focus was, uh, there's nobody who is righteous before God. When you come before your people and you say, if you are slept with anybody, are you trying to say you are this, you are that? Now, I begin to, now I began to reflect on it. I was like, okay, let me think for a moment because videos like this will have good shares. When people are looking for things to validate their 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 wrongdoing validate their hypocrisy these are the things they will focus on now when you see a man who god has helped and by his own because he in fact when i look at my own life we look at you know you can compare two things you see that we miss it 
Because at that time, you know the Holy Spirit said this thing is bad, but you still go ahead and do it. But there are people, by the help of God, God has helped them. By the grace of God, they have been able to live righteously. And so you can't stand and say there's no one who is holy or there's no one who is righteous. So you are attacking his truthfulness because you know that he's saying the truth. So what the man of God is doing now is to water down. So what are you doing? You are trying to promote the fact that ah, no one is perfect. So why would you be boasting? Is it easy? If it was easy, you too would have done that. Instead of, you know, focusing on the type of things that, oh, it is possible. It is attainable. You can live for Jesus. The grace is made available. Don't just focus on the negative. And when I see people always saying that, eh, look at this other man of God. He did this thing, but he's still doing ministry. And I begin to ask for all the positive things. Must you look at the negative? Must you look at the negative? Must you find the thief? Why not look at the one? Even Apostle um, 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 Selman. Apostle Selman, do you know why he can talk about these things? It's because he's putting his life in check. You see, people who talk about it is because they're putting, they can't be talking about it if they are sleeping with ladies at the back. They are sleeping with ladies. But they can talk about these things boldly because God is helping them and they are putting measures to live fashion. So now when you come and you attack them because of the right thing, then you understand that where is the body of Christ going to? So you won't be the one you say, ah, you know, no man is perfect. We are all weak by the flesh. You, you keep talking about grace, 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 grace. And then we don't focus on the right thing because of the mercy of God, because of the grace of God. That is what we project. And we try to empower people to keep living in unrighteousness. It's okay. Just attend church service. I want to see you because I want the church to be full. So four times in a week, I just want to make sure you are in church. Whether you live righteous or not is not important. Whether you are you are, if you are, you, you are afraid of God, no, it's not important. Just attend church service. We want the, 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 the number. Attend church service is fine. Occupy the seat. Let the seat be full. That's our focus. So you attack someone who tries to project righteousness, try to project the right thing. When you talk about scamming, when you talk about um, using members, when you talk about manipulating people, no, they attack you. They say, ah, you are talking about people. But if you see people who actually are not stealing church money, they'll talk about it. Why? Because they want to put their self on check. They want it, nothing dies on the internet when they talk about it. So that tomorrow you can say, ah, you said this thing, no. Why? They, they are asking God, and I know that in the second, I say, God, help me. You could see hearts who are panting for righteousness, panting to raise people who fear God when no one is watching you what you do. Not the one that you only do because people are watching you. And then you know what Jesus said to them? He says, he says you are like whitewashed tombs. You know what whitewash is? At least all of us who are coming from Africa, I don't know if they do it here. All of us will know what whitewash is. Whitewash is not real paint. That is what you put first. Before you put the original paint on the house, you have to put whitewash. And the Bible called them. It says you are like whitewashed tombs. When you open the tomb, it says they are bones rotting. Bones rotting. Rotting together. They are rotting. They are broken. He said they are bones that are rotting. He said like, like whitewashed tombs. Am I here for condemnation? No. Because I keep saying, and that is why when I thought about it, I said, ah, this is what the enemy wants to do to, to, to close you, not to say the truth, what is written in the scripture. Fear God. Fear God. If we see, the Bible says we should walk out our salvation, what? In fear and trembling. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Walk out your salvation. It is a personal thing. Walk out your salvation. Once you have given your life to Christ, it becomes your responsibility. It says, therefore, my beloved, as this was Paul writing to the church of Philip, that's to the, to the Christians there. And it's the same thing that he's giving me this morning to give to the children of God, those of us who are in the kingdom. He says, therefore, Paul was talking to them. He said, therefore, my beloved, dear women, transforming women, dear people who God has brought that they should hear the word of God this morning. He says, dear, therefore, my beloved women. He said, as you have always obeyed. So they have been obeying. But look at, look at the efforts. He said, not as in my presence only. When your obedience is limited only when that particular person is there, then something is wrong when you don't pay attention to the one who creates you. You can only pay attention to the leader. If something is wrong with our Christianity, it's wrong. Paul says, no, you have obeyed all, but I hope the obedience is not just only because I was present. He said, not as in my presence only, but now much more. 
when I'm not there. It was a letter. He was not there. He was he was urging them and telling them to be obedient. And look at it. It says, but now, much more in my absence, walk out your own salvation. Walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. When you see a leader who does not have it, it is okay. Walk out your own. Work out your own salvation. The Bible says, with fear and trembling. Work out your own. Work out your own. Your own salvation. Once you have made that commitment, it's not enough to say, ah, I've given my life to Jesus, so I'm not a child of God. That's why I talk about the love of God. That's not enough. You have to start working out your salvation. And how do you work out your salvation? The Bible says, with fear. What do we talk with reverence for God, with awe for God? He becomes in your thought pattern. So when you make decisions, when you want to do something, you want to make sure that even if my leader is missing it, I should not miss it because there is a one that, you know, that has my leader's life in his hands. That is the one you first of all obey before you come to man. Work out your own salvation in fear and in trembling. Paul says, let your obedience no end because I was there. When I was there, yes, I knew you obey. But the test of your obedience is when I am not there. It says, but even more so. In other words, if there are things you can do when people see you, when people are not see, seeing you, even more so. It means more emphasis should be paid. I just said to us that beauty is good. Charm is not as bad as it is, though it has some negative things. The writer says, and the author says, I have a superior alternative for you, which is the fear of God. It says even more so. So you have to invest more in the inside so that the inside can be good before the outside. Have you ever seen a sick, have you ever gone to the hospital? If you have ever done um, hospital evangelism or going to give people food, have you ever gone to the hospital and see somebody who make up on the bed? Even if it's mere malaria. Even their hair, they will be with nets until they discharge them. Have you ever gone to the hospital? You see somebody who make up on the bed. Huh. Have you ever gone? You know, sometimes any things we just need to sit and reflect on them. It says even more so. Even more so. Even more so when I am not there. Even more so when your leader is not there. Even more so. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We're going to pray all the scriptures I have. Of course, five Mondays. God will help us. You see why God will help us? Because sometimes I don't even know how he does it. Fear of the Lord. I've not explained to us yet what the fear of the Lord is. So maybe next week we'll talk about it. I just wanted us to bring to that point that let's not live in deception. Let's not allow the world to deceive us. Oh, yes. Even, even, even us in the church. Because some of these things, our deception starts from inside. Let's not allow the world to deceive us. Please, let's not live in deception. Fear of the Lord. Let's fear God. Let's fear God. Let there are times that when you have an encounter with the word of God, that that word begins to help you to check your life, to make sure that something is actually, you know, alternating. Something is actually changing. Don't just increase your tithe and your offering alone without increasing your reverence for God. No, no, no. As good as those other things are, without inf increasing your reverence, your, 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 your consciousness of the God person inside of you, your consciousness of who you carry. When you do business with somebody, there is a consciousness inside of you that makes you act the way you act. Your consciousness, the God person. I don't know what you have heard. We're going to be asking God. Maybe next week, I'll teach us fear is a spirit. The Bible talks in Isaiah that seven spirits, the Bible says one of them, the last one, it says the fear, the, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. You're going to be asking God, Father, you will help me. In this month of April, it's not something that ends here. It's something that can actually make everything around your life so better. It can make you become a woman of integrity. It can make you become a woman of your word. It can make you, it make you, it can make you to be trusted. There are so many things we'll be looking at. We will really look about the fear of God and parenting. We look at it because I discovered that it's in the scripture. It's in the scripture. So there are so many things we are going to be looking at in this month of April as the Lord will grant us grace. You're going to be asking God, Father, help me to fear you. Increase my reverence for you. Let the fear of the Lord. <laughs> Ah, Sister Faith, time. I can't continue, but we'll have four more weeks. God will help us. Thank you. Let the fear of the Lord fill my heart. Let the fear of the Lord fill my heart. 
Let the fear of the Lord fill my heart. You're going to be going before God. Father, help me. Increase my reverence for you. Before you even make it to church on Sunday, you have six days in a week that attest to who you truly are. It's not Sunday that makes who you are. Six days of the week that attest to who you are. Father, reverence for you. Reverence for you. Reverence for you. Fill me with that reverence for you. Fill me with reverence for you. Fill me with that. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. That word that is not yet to entice us. Most often, these are the things we don't want to hear. They are not yet to entice us, but they are yet to make us become better. They are yet to record a closer relationship with you. We thank you for the month of April where we'll be seeking and learning about the fear of the Lord. That will help us become better people that can be wired to make a difference in our generation. We thank you, O King of Glory, because you have reminded us this morning that we can actually be in church and yet live in deception. We can actually love Jesus, call upon his name, look like him. Do them say things like him, but yet we are living in deception. Father, we thank you for your word this morning because your word is here to correct us. You are not here to condemn us. And that is why you are reminding us as you even teach us more next week that the fear of the Lord is not the fear that comes from anxiety. It's not the fear that comes from, ah, what have I done? No, no, no. The fear of the Lord is reverence. The fear of the Lord is all. The fear of the Lord is everything. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, it said, this is the conclusion of the matter. It's says fear God. It's the conclusion of our life. It's the conclusion of everything we are going to achieve in life. It's the conclusion of everything we will build. Everything that is built on the fear of the Lord will stand the test of time. Father, we thank you for this word of remembrance, of reminder you have given unto us. I pray for as many of us, myself inclusive, and all my sisters, and all those that you will be bringing to our hearts, that Lord, this month will not pass by, that something inside of us will not change, that this world will come in to transform our life, this world will come in to change us, that Lord, we shall fear you even in our sleep, even when no one is watching you, we shall grow in reverence of you, we shall grow in awe of you, that you matter in our mind, we will carry you everywhere we go, in the place of of business will carry you when we are talking to a sister will carry you mind before we say a word we think about you first what you love will become what we love what you hate will become what we hate because we have carried the fear of god in our hearts father we thank you we thank you the little things we have said this morning we pray that you begin to teach us throughout the week you begin to expand on us you begin to even remind us from our own personal experiences you show us that i look at you you are still the same person but this area you see the difference between when you fear me and when you don't fear me help us i pray that if you are looking for women to raise that will be launched into the world to represent you accurately may it please you that over ttw you will find some women over ttw there will be a host of women you will find that will not play their work with you but indeed they will grow in reference for you father thank you for your word for anyone who has missed it maybe the word of god is actually pricking them and saying that you need to do better. I pray that Lord God, you will forgive their sins. For everyone that wants to rededicate their life, that wants to say, oh, from this day, I'm not even waiting for Sister Miriam to preach the whole fear of the Lord. From this day, I repent of that which I'll be doing. Maybe the Holy Spirit is already saying that this one, this one, this one, you are not living the fear of the Lord. There are some things we are supporting. You know, you are part of it. You know this thing is wrong. You are not the one doing it, but you know this person is doing this thing is wrong, but you are supporting it. You are part of it. And maybe the Holy Spirit is saying, why should you? Why should you? Because of what people will say. You are still tied to it. You are still tied to it and you know it is a wrong thing. You are going to go before the Father and say, Father, mercy. Lord, I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I acknowledge I've missed it. And you are not, your focus is not about me. Your focus is about the sin. I ask for your mercy. All those who want to rededicate their ways unto God. Father, I pray that they will be accepted in your kingdom. I pray that the grace to live righteous, righteously will be released upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Christ, we have prayed. Amen and amen. And please, these are messages you should share. These are messages you should share. These are messages you should share. So go ahead and share the video. Hallelujah. Auntie Kelly, are you here? Oh, sorry. I thought I was already talking. I thought that was unmuted. Uh, some straining. May the Lord answer you. In the day of trouble, may the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Amen. Amen.
May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. Amen. Amen. May he remember all of your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Amen. Amen. May he grant you according to your heart's desires and fulfill all your purpose. Amen. Amen. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Amen. Amen. Now I know that the Lord says his anointed. He will answer them from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Amen. Amen. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Amen. Amen. Save the transforming woman, Lord. May the king answer us when we call. Amen. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for today. We give you all the praise. We are grateful for your word. We are grateful for what you have done. We thank you for this week. As a fellowship, we decree and we declare that this week is blessed. We decree and we declare that April is blessed. We decree and we declare that the womb of this month shall bring forth good tidings unto us. Father, we pray that even as we step out doing our activities and carrying, doing whatever you have called us to do, we decree that wherever the sole of our feet will touch, we shall possess it. We pray that the Spirit of the Lord will not depart from us this week. The Spirit of the Lord will empower us to fear God in everything we do, empower us to live right, empower us to live for Jesus and profess, live life according to what we have professed as Christians. Father, we bless you holy name we pray and together we pray for each and every one of us that is here and that will even listen to us later that will not be partakers of emergency will not be partakers of bad news will not be partakers of casualty this week that if they be anything we are supposed to hear it will be news of joy news of celebration and advancement in the mighty name of jesus we ask that you take all the glory over our lives in jesus matchless name we have prayed amen and amen let's share the grace may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely his goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much, Facebook and Instagram family. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being part of us and I'll see you again on Monday. Bye for now.